Russell, welcome along. <laughs> Great crowd here tonight and uh, looking forward to this T20 series, I'm sure. Certainly, it's a lot of excitement. Not, not much of uh, cricket has happened here in Sri Lanka. So we are having a packed house, even though uh, the rains have been in and out. A word on the ground staff. They've been putting the covers on and taking it off <laughs> all day long. So basically, about 20, 25 times it's come in and out. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been phenomenal, hasn't it? I mean, this early this morning we had some real heavy rain, then it sort of eases off, and so then the, the ground staff come out, they do their work, it comes off. We, we didn't think we'd have a toss on time at all, but, uh, you know, it was a little bit late, and we've, we've got there, and hopefully tonight that rain stays away, we're going to get a decent game in. So, uh, take a look at these squads. The New Zealand squad, we heard from uh, Tim Sow that they've left out Tom Bruce, he's out. Um, Lockie Ferguson has fractured his thumb, which means he may be on his way home, which is a real shame for Lockie Ferguson. That was uh, yesterday at training. And uh, the other one missing out today is Todd Astle. So New Zealand will go in with some, some powerful guys at the top when you look at, um, at the likes of, of uh, Martin Guptill, of Tim Seifert up towards the top, Colin Munro. They'll be relying heavily on those bowling uh, options later on in the piece. So I'm interested to see Seth Rance. And then Sri Lanka's squad, uh, Rusty, well, there's some new faces in that one. Lots of youngsters. We've seen most of them uh, at some stage uh, in uh, ODI cricket or T20 cricket. So it's, it's, it's an exciting one. Not a lot of experience. So Lasit Malinga is probably the only senior man there. And he's trying to look to guide them through. We have about a year. Even the last World T20, he had his own plans, but it didn't go, to, go the way he wanted it. But this time, he has learned from his mistakes and probably trying to see uh, um, or look at quite a few all-rounders who can uh, give you something here and there. If, if and they want some inspiration, Sri Lanka, I mean, they, they look no further than this man. As far as T20 one-day cricket's concerned, they shouldn't look any further. He's captaining a, a youngish group of guys. What sort of captain will he be? What sort of captain is he? Uh, to me, he's uh, tactically very, very sound. He knows, uh, he's got plans. He knows what to, exactly to do. Now, sometimes when you get these um, legends of the game, you, if, you, if you may like, how they get things out of the youngsters can be tricky because the youngsters might not be able to perform at yeah. that level. So he's got to come probably a couple of steps down to try and understand these players and get them out. But I, I like what I hear from him. Of course, since he's got his thought process, uh, sometimes doesn't go well with many others. Uh, too many cooks spoil the soup, yeah. as you'd say. But um, I, I'd rather go with him, knowing what he wants to do and has some direction. So he's got plans with these younger boys. Uh, he tries to bring in the new guys, introduce them. And um, this, uh, we, we have seen them. You've seen uh, Lakshan Sandakan who mm -hmm. bowls uh, those Chinamans. Kasun Rajita, he's a seamer. So there's plenty of it there. But you have to perform under pressure. You have to now take the responsibility as the next Sri Lankan team. So that's what we're looking at for this squad. All right, they're starting lineup. Uh, Vishka Fernando and Kusal Pereira up top. Mendes, Dikwela, uh, Shanaka. He gets an opportunity tonight. Uh, Shihan. Akila Udana, we're looking forward to him as well. Hasaranga, we talked about him in that uh, test match build-up, didn't we? Looking forward to this. So they, they've got plenty on offer here, the Sri Lankan side tonight. Yeah, four top batsmen, uh, Kusal Pereira, Avishka Fernando, Mendis and Dikwell. And then Dasun Shanaka, Shehan Jai, Surya, Uisuru Udana and Vanindu Hasaranga. They're the all-rounders we're yeah. talking about, those who can look to hit the boundary. So it's a kind of setting it up for the rest. Mm -hmm. New Zealand side, uh, Guptil Munro, Seth Rance will be... Uh, I would say down the bottom of that uh, batting order when the time comes. Ross Taylor, Colin de Grandom, Tim Seifert. I see Tim Seifert probably batting at three. He's the wicketkeeper batsman. Missed out on that World Cup because of a broken finger. So, uh, you know, a bit of unfortunate uh, circumstance for Tim Seifert there. Santner Kugelein, who's a big hitting all rounder. The skipper, Tim Southey. Daryl Mitchell, he'll bat probably in that middle order, around about five or six. I would see Daryl Mitchell and then bowl a little bit of, uh, a little bit of seam up and a few slower balls, and then obviously Ish Sodi, who's ranked in the top uh, five of T20 bowlers in the world. No doubt where he'll bat, though. Yeah, I think Ish might be at number 10. Oh. I, I maybe, may have Seth Rance <laughs> at, uh, at number 11 okay. in that New Zealand side. But it, it, look, it's a, it's a powerful-looking side, even though they flew eight guys home from that test series and only kept the five players here. It's, it's sure to be a good series, I think, Russell. Uh, I think this New Zealand team has some experience. They've also been successful in creating... A, a lot more depth. So they are going the different routes of white ball cricket to red mm. ball cricket. So even though there have been changes here, I remember when we were in New Zealand early in the day, it was pretty much this squad. 
that played Sri Lanka. Yeah, it was. Well, uh, earlier this evening when we arrived at the ground, the covers were off the pitch, and we sent Kyle Mills out there to tell us all about it. The first of the T20 games here in this series between Sri Lanka and New Zealand here at Palakali. It's always a high-scoring affair here. Look, overcast conditions. There's cloud around. There's been a little bit of rain. It's a touch cool. But let's look at the all-important wicket. Now, the wicket here is really hard. I'll bang down. Look how hard it is. But there's not, as you'll see here, there's not as much fresh grass on this wicket as there normally is. I still think there'll be good pace and carry through to the wicketkeeper, but I think it would be almost a slow, almost tennis ball bounce through to that wicketkeeper. Previous scores. Look, the last five games here, the, the average first inning score has been 205, but there's an anomaly there. Neil Maxwell went berserk one night for Australia. They got 260. So I don't think that's going to be the case. Normally, 176 is the par score first innings. So whoever bats first, that's the target. They'll be looking for a bare minimum. All in all, should be an entertaining game of cricket. A good surface, Russell. It looks a good surface. I love this ground. I mean, we're sitting, what, are we on the third floor of this grandstand? The crowd are magnificent. You're looking down. It's almost like the, the a bit like the bull ring in, in South Africa, where it's sort of down below where the crowd sit. You've got great grass embankments around it. Tell me, some, tell me more about this ground and a little bit about the surface here and what we should expect as well. You're pretty close in uh, your assessment when you call it the bullring. You're referring to the Wanderers. Yes. But actually, you look at this, uh, the grandstand, which is across us, it's modelled on the Centurion, maybe an hour away. Uh, but the pitch, you're right, it's a lot cooler up here and it tends to hold. So there could be a bit more bounce, but pace can vary. Lots of cracks when you look at it. Won't play a part at all. It's yeah. nicely rolled in. It'll be a good surface. I don't see a lot of turn either. So I think uh, Kyle Mills, in talking about that 176, he's got something right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think more? Uh, well, if you, if you set it up for yourself, of course, but 170, 180 is the range that you need to look for. And it's interesting what Lasit Marling has done. With the range, the chances of a shorter game, it, it's there. But yeah. he's opted to bat first to take the pressure of the Sri Lankan team. So it, it's interesting that he goes that way, but I still think 170, 180 is what they need. Yeah, and also the other thing about that, I think, is that uh, he, he's basically said there won't be any dew later on, so the ball won't get wet. It'll be still easy enough for the spinners to control it later on. So that's a good thing. Well, one man who will be in action later on with the bat in hand had a tough time at the World Cup, but looking to bounce back, Martin Guptill caught up with Roshan Abisinga earlier. It's always good to have one of the most explosive batsmen in the world cricket, especially in T20 cricket, Martin Guptill. Great to be talking to you. First and foremost, you must be pleased with the break you've had, World Cup final, and now getting back to international cricket. you like to talk us through that? Yeah, it wasn't actually much of a break, to be honest. I was playing another game of cricket for Worcester four days after the final, so it was straight back into it for me. But um, no, it was good to be able to play a little bit of T20 cricket and the build-up to the series, so I'm feeling ready to go. You've been touring Sri Lanka, you've played a lot of cricket against Sri Lanka. What are your thoughts about the Sri Lankan team and what will be the areas you'll be concerned about? Uh, it's concern is an interesting word, but no, it's, it's, it's always tough coming here um, to play against Sri Lanka in their own conditions. You know, everything's against, you know, the home crowd here, you know, really get behind Sri Lanka. But, um, you know, we've had some really good preparation and we've got a bit of, uh, I guess you could say, a bit of momentum from that last test match coming with us as well. So, uh, no, the boys are prepared well and we're ready to go. What about your team? New captain? How is the camaraderie in the side? He, he, how, how do you see it? Yeah, I guess you can say it's not really new captain. He's done it before, and you know he, he's been successful at it. So it's it's more about um, you know how how we get together as a team, and we've done that pretty well. Um, you know, Sri Lanka is an exciting place to come and tour. Uh, for a lot of the guys, it's the um, you know the first time touring with the New Zealand team here. So it's it's all about getting around each other and making sure that we're ready to go. Martin, thanks a lot for your time. No worries. Thank you very much. Yeah, some of us wondered how he would cope post that World Cup. Had a really tough time, Martin Guptill. Had an opportunity to win it for New Zealand. Couldn't quite get New Zealand across the line, but uh, good to see him back in the New Zealand colours. They did stay in Colombo, Russell, and, and played a game after that second Test match. New Zealand up against the uh, Sri Lanka President's eleven. A comfortable win for New Zealand in that match. It certainly is. Uh, they've got a decent run out. You see, it's 168 for six with contributions from a lot of the batsmen would mean they've got some time out in the middle, which is good. And most of the names of the Sri Lankans you see there are out here. So a bit of familiarity already amongst the two squads. Yeah, and familiarity because these two sides play against each other a lot. What about this rivalry? What about the, the fact that these guys do know each other very well? Um, New Zealand have got the wood over the Sri Lankans off late. Form in the T20s, just like the ODIs, hasn't been great for the Sri Lankans. But playing out here, 
Sri Lanka have dominated uh, the Kiwis over the past. So probably if you are looking into history for feel, uh, the feel-good factor, Sri Lanka would probably have it. You mentioned the due factor. I know for a fact that uh, the Sri Lankan management after dinner, maybe 9, 9, 15 yesterday, came out to check how it would look. But when you're having so much rain, other than the moisture or whatever the, the rain leaves behind, there's not going to be any dew. Uh, so coming back to this game and totally on the form, it's a fresh beginning as far as Sri Lanka is concerned. But the last three, four years, they probably have won only 25% of the games and it's, it's been a hard, hard grind. So it's, it's a new, young Sri Lankan side. I mean, you look at that head-to-head, -head, uh, the matches in Sri Lanka, and Sri Lanka have won one, New Zealand have won two, and a tied and a no result. So uh, even in Sri Lanka, New Zealand have slightly had the, the wood on them. Sri Lanka in neutral venues have been better. So that's been the key in neutral venues. But as, as we talked about earlier, Russell, it's a youngish Sri Lankan side led by Lasith Malinga. They're building towards a T20 World Cup. What you want to see is just some of these young kids just go out there and stamp their, their authority on this, on this game, express themselves as Malinga talked about. Yeah, just try and show us that uh, you need to drop the young. Yeah. We're good enough at whatever age you are um, and we want to take the responsibility. We saw some signs of that happening with the likes of Niroshan Dikwell. So in the test matches, yeah. he played against uh, his usual grain or instincts. So those are the type of things that we are looking for uh, to really build on a team. And Lasit Malinga will be excited about that. And uh, he's, not, he's not looking at too many of the seniors because in the last build-up, um, Angelo Matthews got injured. Dilshan was out of form, so that really didn't help. So this is all about the youngsters. All right, well, a, a newbie in this uh, Sri Lankan side tonight. And tell us a little bit more about Hasaranga. Vanindu Hasaranga, um, he's a useful bat, probably around number six, number seven, can hit the ball hard. He's a leg break bowler. He's played ODI cricket and uh, picked up a hat trick on the debut against Zimbabwe. So he, he, he's, he's been in and around uh, the mix and knows Lasit Malinga pretty well. So he, he's not going to be faced by what, what he's going to be seeing out here. Yeah, it's fantastic. And the atmosphere is building really nicely here. As I said earlier, I, I love this ground. It's, uh, New Zealand will be bowling first. Sri Lanka won the toss. They were elected to bat first. The, the, the noise in and around this ground after what we saw in the test matches, which were sparse crowds, if these guys can't get up for this game tonight, there's something wrong. They will be up for it because uh, it's important. They also know um, the excitement that's brought back uh, the Bangladesh ODI series and even the test series. Sri Lanka were competing, Simon. Now, if you go back a, a year or two, uh, it, it was all predictable. You could easily say what was going to happen, what was not going to happen. But now it's changing. So I think that's what you need to build on. That's what you have. So I think it's exciting times for the Sri Lankans. Yeah, it certainly is. The two opening batsmen about to uh, walk out to the middle of this wonderful stadium here in Pelakelli. The skies are clear. Thank goodness for that for now. New Zealand will have a brand new ball in hand. Will it be the skipper, Tim Southey? It probably will be. And one man who knows so much about the new ball in hand in white conditions and uh, one-day international and T20 conditions, Kyle Mills is in the commentary box. And alongside him is Ramiz Raja. Thanks, Simon. Yeah, the crowd have piled into Palikali and the atmosphere is electric. Malinga winning the toss, saying, I'll have a bat. And Tim Sally, the skipper for New Zealand. He'll be taking the first over. Ramiz, good evening to you. Good evening, Kyle. And a hello to all our viewers all around the world. This should be a cracker of a contest because Sri Lankans have had a good time playing here. They won more matches than any the other side. Seven of 11 have been won by them. Kusal Mendes will start the fun for Sri Lanka. And Tim Saudi has the ball. Skippering New Zealand. He's skippered them in three T20 games and been victorious in all. Plenty of experience. Economy of 8.57. Is that a good or a bad economy in T20 terms, Kyle? Well, he bowls all the tough overs, Tim Saudi. He bowls at the start obviously with the field restrictions and he bowls at the death so he never hides from a task at hand Tim Southey and Pereira well he's a nice player average of 29 strike rate just under 140 best score of 84 he'll be looking to improve on that tonight and both teams they both warmed up very well I watched both teams closely and 
what were difficult circumstances with the covers and the rains, but there was a buzz in both camps. You could certainly tell that they were both up to it. A lot of interest for this T20 series. A lot of people were queuing up outside a couple of hours before the game. With the World T20 coming up in the next 12 months, I think most teams will be looking to establish a set platform, a set combination. And there's a first real exercise towards that World Cup. Yeah, it's a stake in the ground for both sides from this ball onwards and Tim Southey. You'll see a bit of outswing from Tim Southey. He'll bowl with nice pace. He'll try and swing it away. He has Ross Taylor and a widest first slip. Gets off the mark with the support of a large roar of the home fans. Very much a great buzz in the crowd. Look at that. The local fans. Uh, come out on full force tonight in Palakali. Streets and the roads were busy in anticipation of the series. Look at that. They have packed them in. And it's fantastic. All were in their nation's shirt as well. Not too many Kiwis out there, Rummies. Give you a dollar if you find one. <laughs> Is a terrific striker. Pereira, the one those square fielders to be in place against him. Likes to cut, likes to pull. Very strong bottom handed player. Fine leg is back, third man is up in the circle. They have a square leg in place for him. A nice shape back into the stumps. Right shape, absolutely. 131 kilometers now you'll see this perfect scene presentation you'll find from Saudi look at this coming up see that scene pointing down towards final leg would be for the left-hand batsman and he's getting good shape he'll be trying wrap Pereira on the pads or bring it in Certainly doesn't want to be giving any work he'll mix it up Saudi between going across him and swinging it in just like that once again, nice and full. So the idea here is not to give him any width. So keep it nice and tight, targeting the stumps, bringing that ball back into the into the set of stumps. Yeah, he'll get hurt if he gives too much width. But it's such a true wicket. It's always been a good wicket here at Pally Kelly. You get good pace and carry through to the wicket keeper. Not as much grass on the surface tonight. I think you still get the carry through to Tim Seifert. Change of wicket keepers for this series and changing field as well uh, third man comes up you can see the pitch there not as much fresh grass that removed the fielder from that area to just make sure that the boundary doesn't leak in the last part of this over so that's good thinking by new zealand sri lanka's track record in the last few t20s have not been great they've lost eight of last nine t20s New Zealand on the other end of one three out of last four. So one team is upwardly mobile, the other team has got to win a few matches to get a bit of confidence under the belt. A lot of fresh face faces in this New Zealand setup. Uh, it's certainly a format where and you'll see the New Zealand side here. Uh, a big change in personnel from the most recent test series. And obviously with Sri Lanka, he got the master back. Malinga, he has got the captain stripe on as well. And the crowd just absolutely love him. It's an excellent over. Very good start by Tim Saudi. One over down, two without a wicket.
there's a lot of potential in this Sri Lankan lineup, especially A. Fernando. He's an A star hitter, showcased his talent in the, uh, in the World Cup recently. Did extremely well in the Bangladesh series as well. Dick Weller, we know. And it's Asaranga who's making his T20 debut. Rance, Sid Rance is in. Tell us a little bit about him. We already know that he doesn't have a crop of hair. Yeah, he's got the sweat band on tonight. Look at that. Seth Rance uh, has his opportunity tonight. Very experienced first-class cricketer in New Zealand. And started his career off exceptionally well in T20 cricket. Seven wickets from six matches. Very good average. Just under 18 and also a pretty good economy rate as well. He swings the ball, bowls at a nice handy pace. Experienced cricketer. He knows what he's doing. And he should enjoy these conditions with the humidity. We could swing bowler and we'll be able to swing it around tonight. Oh, nice shape back into the stumps. Inside edge, I think. What's up? Let's wait for the umpire. Yeah, it's been given as played. Great right swing too from Rance. That swing late. India just couldn't free his arms. Look at this. Look at that seam. You can see how it's angled down for the final leg for right-hand batsman. Wrapping him on the back leg. He could just be missing leg stump. But that's what you'll get from him. Swings it quite nicely. He'll have the advantage with Sri Lanka haven't really played him before. There he goes, but there's protection. What a pickup shot that is. He had a very fine World Cup where he got runs for Sri Lanka. Such a natural instinctive hitter he is. Timed it well. Look at this. Just picked it up. You see that bottom hand really come into play. What he did do though, he's picked out Colin Munro on the boundary. Really good swing again from Rance. That tells me this is a pretty good surface. Be picking it up off the stumps just like that. Big shot into the gap. Will it run? No, it doesn't. That's well stopped by Santner. It's a sluggish outfield. It has rained here, so that helped the fielder really to stop that ball. But intentions are very clear from both strikers. Yeah, the outfield is a little bit damp. You see here, going with the swing, and he's picked it up. He actually picked it up really nicely, but great anticipation from Satna. And a great technique out on the rope. A good start in the field so far for New Zealand. Really clean pickup. Easy to dive on, on the outfield because it is soggy. So you don't hurt yourself, but that was a fantastic piece of fielding from Santner. All happening in fast motion compared to test matches where we had a bit of a breather at times, but there's no stopping the action. Big slot, big heave, misses the ball completely. Get a serve, trying to hit the ball a little straighter. It's a slowish pitch. And he just rolled his fingers just down the side of it as well. You can see the first few balls of the over by Rance. A great scene presentation. And that's what you'll get from Seth Rance. He's got great variety in his skill set. Yeah, he'll be looking to finish this over strong. Full toss and gloriously played. Bisected the two fielders. Easy ball for the striker, really, to help himself to the fence. It's 11 without a wicket.
a nice mix between the young and the old for New Zealand. The old campaigners, Guptill, Taylor, Southey. And a few players who have been around for a few years in Satna. There's a few newbies that some of the world probably have not seen. Kugelein, Mitchell, Rance. And the good players on a stack of claim in this T20 side. And we have a change of bowling as well. Kugelein, Scott kugelein has been handed the ball. Now you'll see some good pace from Scott Kugelein. He really bowls heavy balls into the wicket. Just the five matches for two wickets. He's a better bowler than those stats. Say just there. And he'll bang it hard into this wicket. That will be a wide down the leg side. All it needed was a feather tick around the corner for the ball to run away to the fence. Third man, sorry, fine leg was up in the circle. Yeah, is the last ball of the second over. Really poor finish to the over by Rance. He was looking for that Yorker. He just didn't quite execute it. And Mendes, he played it nicely. He didn't look to hit it too hard at all. He just gapped it through the offside. Oh, what a glorious shot that is. Blattened, brilliantly played down the ground. Great shot by Carrera. That sound of the bat ricocheted around the whole ground. That's a good stick. I'll keep a hold of that one. But Carrera, look at this. Was the key here, he was able to free his arms. There's a touch wide and a touch full from Kugelein. He's just trying to bowl as fast as he possibly can. And it's just a bit too much width. And there's not too much the Grunholm could have done there at mid-off. Oh, there was width for him to hit it square. Somehow missed it. 141 kilometers an hour this from Kugelai. It just shows you it's a slow wicket. And it's a cross seamer too. Tim Seifert just catching it down by his ankles. And under the under edge of the bat. Now again, it was width as well. I think Kuglai needs to bowl a touch straighter. If he bowls with good pace. If he bowls width, he will get hurt. He hits the bat hard. He's got pace. Picked up four wickets. In the warm-up match, Kugelein, 4 for 19. Bowls very heavy balls, you see there. 142 kilometers an hour, he bowls hard into the wicket. And that line was much better from Kugelein. It was straighter. He wasn't able to free his arms. Pereira, and that brings Mendes on strike. Uh, three balls so far, just the six runs of Kugelein's first over. Just a touch slower, I think, on this occasion. He's got to do that. Become a T20 specialist. New Zealanders versus Sri Lanka President's eleven in that warm-up contest. He's been winning by 33 runs. Scott Kugelein, 4 for 19 in his follows. It's an FJ play this one, Ramis. Look at him. Over the bat and he get 26. Every cricketer wants to be a Jasuria. And he's named after him. A couple of good deliveries to get his confidence back. Yeah, it's a really good line there from Kugelheim. Just banging hard on the length on off stump. There's not too much the batsman can do with those sort of deliveries. You'll see here, look. Shoulders it down, cross seamer. And just outside off stump. Pressure to finish off well here. Six runs from the over. Last ball to be bold. At times you overanalyze, overthink it. Cross seam ball is put away into the gap. There's protection, only a single. Dieselin Fielding has been top notch so far. 18 without a win.
Benindu Hasaranga is making his T20 debut for Sri Lanka. Good side, a mix of experience and youth. Big shot clears the infield and ball will go and hit the fence. Couple of bounces into the rope. That's a very good strike. Used the angle so well. And the pressure mounts on the bowler. Rant's been hit for a four of the first ball of his over. It's a house full here. Massive audience. And loving every moment of this. It's a hard down the ground. I tell you now, he didn't get in the middle of the bat either. It's the inside edge. Now it's from the swing of Rance. Uh, he's sitting here enough on it. Safe shot, really. Good look, it's up. But on is up. Uh, it's well played by Mendes. Big strike again. Four more. Fun continues for Mendes. Welcome back to T20 Cricket. It's all action. Sri Lanka, 26 without loss. And Seth Grant, well, two balls off his first two balls of this over. He's swinging it in nicely. And he's just going with the shape of the ball and hoying it to the league side. innings now picking up rhythm for Sri Lanka shot ball is gone for six fabulous strike four four six France is under the pump at the moment Mendes he is on fire short ball he plays the pull shot well there were two men back there and you'll see this, watch this, short ball into the wicket, he sees it early, and it actually goes straight to Mitchell Satin on the boundary, but straight over top, really good shot, great start to the over for Sri Lanka, yeah, Seth Grants, he's answer a few questions now, uh, it's good batting by Sri Lanka, Oh, misses out. There was an opportunity to slice it past the infield, this time through the offside. Look at the boundary so far this over, straight down the ground. This is very next ball. He picked it up off his legs, but shorter. Bang! Out of the ground, six runs. And Seth Rance is just looking to bowl a bit wider that fourth delivery to make sure it wasn't going to go to the league side. But Mendes, he's on fire. 23 of 14 balls. Easy single. Exposes a strike to another great striker. We're talking about Pereira, who's got a strike rate of 141.9 in first six overs of his batting. Mendes is 142, so this is... this. If it works, it is working for Sri Lanka. It could be... A nightmarish session for the New Zealanders pacemen. That was smart cricket by Mendes, just to get the single, get off strike. Sometimes when you go four, four, six, you want to keep that momentum going, but that ball wasn't quite there, hit to the boundary, and he just chipped it into the league side. It was good cricket. Very smart cricket indeed. And boom! Over the infield, almost carries for six. Is it a six? They check him. It's a four. Massive over for the Sri Lankans. 19 from it. 37 without a wicket down. Shorter ball to finish the over here for Seth Rance. A touch too short. This is Whip. Batsman's able to free his arms, Pereira, and he played it well. He knows there's no fielders back there, just needs to get it over the 30 meter circle. The man at mid on, and that bat's on fire. Look at it, it's about to explode. They need to tape it up, hold it together. Such a good start by Sri Lanka now. Four overs through, the score is 37 without loss. strike rates down in that right hand column 
Let's go through the top. 1-3-8, 1-4-2 by New Zealand. They're experiencing all of that at the moment. Fernando, that's live. He's early in his career. Don't worry about that. Dibuela, he can play. Just under 140. And look at Yudana your down, your down the bottom, 153 as well. So some heavy hitters in the Sri Lankan lineup. They'll be delighted with the first four overs so far tonight. Tim Saldi started with the ball, is back in again. Poor ball, you see a lot from this. This next phase from New Zealand, change of pace, variations. Good teams in T20 tend to pick wickets in the first six overs. I think that is where New Zealand must pay attention to. Here's the last ball of Seth Rance is over. That was a big over to for Sri Lanka. Uh, obviously a great start here for the Sri Lankan side. And when you're in a position like this, I believe as a bowling group, these are the two hardest overs to bowl. Field restrictions, only two men out. The batting side's on fire. Really hassled by the onslaught from this pair. Tim Saldi losing his direction. Rolling a right one down the leg side. Once again, experimenting with change of pace. Didn't work this time. That's poor delivery. Down the leg side. And side for the keeper. Was able to tidy it up. But yeah, such tough overs to bowl. Sri Lanka, 40 without loss. New Zealand have got to get through 11 deliveries with only two fielders out. We're seeing now there's a man at deep square on the boundary. One also that third man. And smart bowling. He cramps him up. Make sure he cannot free his arms. For New Zealand at this stage, at number six in T20 rankings, Sri Lanka at number eight. So there's room for improvement for both sides, and this is going to be a very good contest. Some nerves, a quality class. Pakistan at number one. They've been outstanding in, uh, in, in T20s. Pakistan, England, South Africa, India at number four. But uh, things can change very quickly in T20 terms because they play a lot of T20s. So there's scope for New Zealand to jump up to notches, notches. Sri Lanka at home, difficult to beat. That's up in the air and taken at mid off. Bit of an anti climax. The crowds will go a little less noisy now. The safe hands of Colin de Grunholm. And Pereira, he departs. And Tim Southey doing the job. They're tough overs to bowl. Trying to bring one back in. Uh, in swinging Yorker. And just wasn't able to catch up on to that. And he picked out to Grunholm. Yeah, he's got a good pair of hands. Tim Southey, he's on the board. Pereira, he departs for 11. Sri Lanka, 41 for one. He's young at this level, right-hander uh, Vishka Fernando, but he's mighty talented. The score innings for him. Hasn't got going in uh, T20s, but his, his success is, is round the corner, the amount of talent that he's got. He's been given an excellent platform here to attack New Zealand. 41 for one, Sri Lanka in 4.3. Tim Southey does the damage. What a for him to have a slip right now, especially with the fresh batsman. 
bouncer. Yeah, he plays it well down to final leg to Ish Sodi. Oh, to me, to me. And here we have the wicket now under pressure, New Zealand. He's pretty certain he'll be going for the Yorker. And Batsman didn't quite catch up with it. And it's just almost popped out softly to Colin de Grunholm. Look at the despair in the crowd. They couldn't believe it. Previous two overs were like fire for Sri Lanka. I think Saudi is so difficult to line up because you can expect a bouncer from him, slow delivery and off cutter, leg cutter, and he's very good at all these variations and various lengths that he produces. Yeah, the key word you use there, Ramiz, were variations. He's got a lot up his sleeve and all for different situations as well. And that comes from years and years of bowling tough overs. Right, last ball of his over. It's done well so far. Just six from it, including a wicket. And he does well. That's when gets jammed up with that extra bit of zip off the surface from Tim Saudi. 43 for the loss of one. 44 for one. Forty-four for one, Mitchell Santner. The attack left arm orthodox. Slinky. Good economy and a very good average. Anyone wicket taker, as you can see that, you're going ahead of uh, the matches you've played. He's doing well. This format, one over of the power play left. So that's the fielding restrictions, of course. New Zealand only allowed two men outside. Be slightly quicker, Russell Arnold. Evening to you. Good evening, Simon. Great start to the game. Crowd also 100% into it. It's a great atmosphere here in Palakali. Doubts whether we'd get underway, but five-minute delay. Brilliant. Oh, and the rock. Clever operator. New Zealand like to use Santa in this manner. Even. Um, in his four over spell he looks to buy wickets gives you the impression that you can climb into him highly character no. gets it through good timing to test the outfield and the outfield wins beats Munro Nicely timed. This looked very good in the very first over. He tried a couple of slogs against Seth Rans, who doesn't give a lot of pace. But now he's quietly settled in and he's playing quality shots. Brown staff done a wonderful job as usual, getting the covers on and off. Had to do it so many times with the amount of drizzles we've had throughout the day. Twenty-one thousand and in here, but these are the guys. They need a special mention for the hard work they've done. And you could see by that shot of Kusal Mendes, value for shots. It's all you want. Yeah, inside the power play. They've been piling up, queuing up actually from uh, 4.35 in the evening. Starved of cricket, really. Here in Candy. Love 
Well, the average power play is 47 for one batting first here at this ground. Sri Lanka slightly better at 50 for one. Kusal Mendes, 32 from 21, has lost Pereira for 11, and Avishka Fernando, relatively new to the crease. Ace. Fielding restrictions over now. Time for some leg spin. Ishsodi. Push for two, no. Great start for the Sri Lankans. They needed that. Asit Malinga won the toss. To a certain extent, surprised us by opting to bat first. Of these two, Kusal Pereira and Mendes started finding the boundary regularly. Kusal Mendes actually the aggressor. He's on to 33. been a good pitch that's what history tells us average score batting first 176 and in the last five t20s 205 that also could have influenced Lasit Malinga but my point is the chances of a shorter game were there hence pretty brave his explanation was that he wanted to relieve the pressure of the youngsters I like that explanation as well, actually, Russell. He's just saying, well, if it rains, it rains. I mean, let, let's not worry about that. Let's give this young, talented uh, bunch of men an opportunity to express themselves. Then it's not about immediate results. If things fall in place, you will get those results. But basically, we are a year out from World T20. We played in Australia. Oh, a little underage, was it? Sounded like a slight under edge through the legs. No, just stayed down through the legs of Seifert. And in it hits, looking for the combination, looking for players, new players who can fit into the system. One area, just that last delivery. Went through from Seifert's legs and under the glass. It's the one area that New Zealand really want him to work hard on. He's a quality batsman, but all the shots, he's a powerful stroke maker. This can tidy up that wicket keeping and be a, a class wicket keeper from Seifert in uh, really just can own a place in this New Zealand white ball side, I think, in the years to come. Start from uh, Ish Sodi. Six runs from the over. 56 for one. Very early to start predicting predicted scores. Anything between that uh, 160 and the 200 mark, I think, will be very competitive. Yeah, these two got to take it to the, about the 10th, 12th over. Ruiz Sri Lanka have lined up. Tikwella is next. Then there's Dasun Shanaka, Manindu Hasaranga. Who's on debut, Shehan Jayasuri? They all like come out and play their shots. They can find the boundary, hence that foundation. 
Blanca. They can be given that freedom if Blanca are one or two down at the most after 12 overs. They can afford to just come out and not use up too many deliveries and be free. I think that's what Lasek Malinga was talking about, what he wants to see. Lots of all-rounders. The, those who can bowl seam and also spin in that little period batting from oh! number five to seven maybe that now this is why he's good got change of pace he's tall he knows to use flight almost 20 kilometers slower than the previous delivery russell went from 96.7 down to 77.6 and that's the, the beauty of Mitchell Santner. It's something that Daniel Vittori was brilliant at. Santner's obviously watched over years, learned a little bit. That one quicker again, flatter. Pushed through at 96 kilometers per hour. But he's got that control with a very similar action. You want me? You want a piece of me? You're going to have to take a chance. That's what Santner tells the batsman. Again. Looped a little slower. And over the last couple of overs, New Zealand have pulled it back. The conceded singles have made sure they're not conceding the boundaries. Salmendis likes to go leg side. Anything straight. Oh, no, Chloe's pitch as well. Sense. Look to use the long handle. <laughs> Plenty happening for mid center. Eight gone, 61 for one. Three good overs from the spinners so far. Santner with two overs for 11. Sodi's just five runs off his first. So 16 overs from the three overs of spin so far. Field placement. So the trick for the Sri Lankan batsman, we mentioned these two getting to the 12th over, maybe, maybe 11th over, will be from over number seven to over number 11. To be able to still score at seven or eight, not at six, because then you tend to pull yourself back and you find yourself a little bit of a hole. But that's the next step for the likes of Kusal Mendes and Avishka Fernando in this middle phase. Yeah, it's good. I think Saudi thought that Mendes might have been coming down. That wide one. Oh. Wide as well there, I think. So two in a row. Getting a bit of turn though, a little bit of grip. Coming knees, coming knees. And boys, in. Can you ball at him or just outside off stump? Mendis looking to play it on the onside. Mind will be on the gap that's it. No short mid wicket, but no gaps in the crowd. Always a colorful, noisy crowd. Love their cricket. Oh, yes, boy, yes, boy, love it. It's great to see them all here. Keep coming, lads. Only thing is, Russell, it's going to be pretty tough getting out of here later on tonight. We might have to just hang around for a little while after the game, I think. One road in, one road out. Brilliant color and sight to see them all walk into the ground lovely ace, lovely ace. love their cricket it's just a wonderful place to watch this particular ground in itself the raised grass banks looking down onto the playing surface massive score love that scoreboard too everything you could possibly want to know about the game 
is uh, displayed on that big scoreboard. Still no boundary. Ever since the spin was introduced, been singles. The Sri Lankans like this type of um, scoreboards around the country, wherever you go. Panadar Premadasa. Rangiri Dumble is a huge scoreboard. The olden days. Oh, to me! Type of boards. Well, more singles for the Sri Lankans. Nine overs bowled, 68 for one. That little period of uh, that consolidation, uh, tight bowling from a New Zealand point of view. Oh, lovely, lovely from Santner. So good, fired it in, turned nowhere near the pitch of it, and comfortable work for Tim Seifert. Yeah, he picked it up early. Santner saw him coming a little quicker. The length also not on offer. Yeah, the pressure was building. Just singles, you feel Sri Lanka pulling back. Probably four overs since the last boundary. He tried, but he missed. Avishka Fernando for 10, it's 68 for two. A little period of uh, pressure from New Zealand's bowlers, and it's resulted in a wicket for Nirushan Dekwela. For the crease, right rate 139, average just 19. From Sri Lankan point of view, Fernando's innings 10 from 17, not a very good one. Not welcome. Dickweller to the crease a little. Numbers good. But you've got to keep in mind he's he's been at the top of the order where he uses the pace, he uses the field restrictions. Abishka Fernando in no man's land. Just trying to up the ante because of the numbers you just mentioned. A little inside edge there. Not sure. Not sure about that. I don't think so. Turned off the top of the pad. Of the flat one review available. Encouragement again. It's slower off the pitch. Yeah. The Lankan spinners will like it. But then you need a score on the board, and that score we're thinking is in the range of 170. Well, nice. Here we are. A couple of balls ago. Well away from those gloves or bat. Oh, yeah, boy! Yeah, real turn there. You're right, Russell. The Sri Lankan spinners will be loving it. And the Sri Lankan batsmen may just need to adjust their sights. Three genuine spinners. 
that Sri Lankan lineup and an opportunity for a, a fourth as a part timer. Yes, and uh, Surya, one in the last round, Akila Dananjaya, Isru Dan and Maling, a great exponents of the slower balls. The boys in London. So maybe not once, or at least get 160. Give yourself an opportunity with the ball turning like that. A knock on from the Saudi. Oh, and the last over from Santner. This one just getting away from Saudi. Mighty over again, though, from Santner. A wicket and six. Five Three runs. Guys. 73 for two. A look at the Sri Lankan side. Good to see Akila Dananja in this side, as we know that he was under some issues with his action. The leg spinner Hasaranga is there, and also the C three seam bowlers Udana, Malinga, and Rajita. Shehan Jasuri could bowl a few overs. Dasun Shanaka is more than useful. So Sri Lanka has a fairly decent makeup, bowling makeup, but they need runs on the board. That's the key here. It's going to be Kugalain. All the good heat and the slippery sharp. The well on strike. Brilliant crowd, and I'll tell you, it's almost a full house. 21,000 people, uh, Ramiz, it's looking very colorful here. Fantastic setup, this. That's nicely played. Well controlled shot will allow him to come back for two. Good running, good thinking. On the top. I believe. And having watched Pakistan over a pretty substantial length in, in T20 cricket, that if you get a good bowling attack, then you can win a lot of T20s. And Pakistan have got that. That's why they are the best side in the world going these days in T20 cricket. And so if Sri Lankans have got good uh, options with the ball, I think uh, they'd be favorites to win here too. Single down to third man, but he's that kind of a player. Great improviser, he would like the pace on the ball. Kusal Mendes has been the key for Sri Lanka. He's made 41 of 29. Another look, just waiting for the ball and just a bit of a ramp on the third man. I like to see Dick Weller in this position at number four. Left hand, right hand combination is good. He'll play the spinners well with this ball spinning back at him. Vishka Fernando struggled against the right arm leg spinner, but the Quella will be a different kettle of fish. And he's on strike. Going at a brilliant rate. 141.4. Sri Lanka will need a partnership. Doing it in singles lately. Yeah, he's off to a swashbuckling start. Played some very, very eye-catching shots. Looked to be in good rhythm. His strike rate in the first six overs is around 150. So he gets Sri Lanka off to a good start. Whenever he, he gets a, a good solid innings under his belt. And so he's off to a, a, a very fine start here. 42 of 30 balls. He goes again. This is gone high. Third man comes around. It falls in no man's land. Neroshan Dikwala was looking to play the scoop. Needs a bit of pace on the ball and he managed to scoop it. He was expecting it to go all the way, but instead, he fell in no man's land. It's mighty brave, really, to try this shot, but he played it reasonably well, even though he wanted a bit more force out of it to get it across to the fence. But if you're not getting runs through conventional batting, then you've got to improvise. And that is exactly what he's done. This is an excellent.
excellent shot. This is the first boundary after over number six for Sri Lanka. They've been doing it in singles and twos. Kusal Mendes picking his gap at mid-wicket. On the pads, that area open. Great shot. Yes, and the secret was that he didn't try to hit the ball hard. It was all about timing it and finding the placement away towards the leg side. Beautiful pickup shot. The balance was good and the execution was near perfect. Lovely piece of timing. Kubelain has been looking to mix it up. He's got a strike rate of 148. He's on 48. Misal Mendes opening the batting here. He's now on 49. 10 runs off the over. It's a big one for Sri Lanka. 83 for 2. It's a very relaxed Sri Lanka dressing room. Plenty of batting left. Lots of all-rounders in that side. Incidentally, Kusal Mendes at 47. Still three more to his half century, but going at a brilliant rate. Big fella just in eight of seven. The Grand Home. Colleen De Grand Home coming on. He's got 10 wickets. He can be a very useful player. Big striker of the ball. To the man at short fine leg, he'll be disappointed. He will be disappointed. Missed out. Fine leg inside the circle. A little angles that you need to find. It was a four ball and missed the occasion. Missed the angle. Hit it straight to the man at short fine. He just keep mixing it up. Such a useful type of bowler, medium pace, he'll keep mixing it up. We saw him, buddy, saw him bowl in the test match, Ramiz, he was so accurate. This is a slower delivery, that was the off-cutter or the off-break. This time, that swung away behind square leg, that's his half-century. Kusal Mendes, an important innings. He's gone to 51 of 35 deliveries. Six fours and one six. Did not throw his wicket away. That's the best part of this batsmanship from Mendes. And the pace has been excellent. We're talking about a 50 of, of 35 balls with a strike rate of almost 150. Sri Lanka needed an opener to be there in the middle part of this innings, and he's still there. It's been a very nice mix, a nice spread of conventional batting mixed with improvisation. And he's kept at most times bowlers guessing it's 550 in t20 cricket open the open the batting here kusal mendes and uh, what a hand he's played as you said very conventional in certain shots look at the crowd they are happy and they're celebrating i can tell you palak la is a place that they turn up in numbers t20 is so popular it's a sought after game and and the common sight Dikvalla, quick, oh, could be trouble here. Lucky that Dikvalla hadn't gone too far, hadn't passed the red line. A direct hit would have been much preferred. A yeah. little bit of confusion. Yes, no, wait, he had to get back and got back in time because no direct hit attempt was made by Ish Sodi. Once again, this time, another single. They'll make it this time. For six runs off the over. It's a good over for New Zealand from Grondholm. 89 for two.
Kusal Mendes has been the man for Sri Lanka, 52 of 36. Nick Fowler just in 9 of 9. A lot of batting to come for Sri Lanka. That batting order should change. Waridu Hasaranga should be batting behind Shehan Jayasuriya. He's an all-rounder. Satna coming on. Last over. He's been good. Three overs for 16. He's going at less than six runs and over. New Zealand will be pleased with the performance of his of their left-arm spinner. But this will be a good battle. Left-arm spinner to the left-hander. Down the wicket. Starts off well. Only a single. Sri Lanka in need of a, maybe a 15 run over because uh, they were going great and so projected score tells us the current rate will fetch them 148 runs six and over 137 so they need to operate it around between eight and ten ten and over 168 yeah boy love me boy you've seen him do this so well, Santner, change of pace, variety, flatter angle, lighting the ball at times. Should be two here. In fact, they will come back for two. This is good running, good running, very good running by Sri Lanka. Soft hands, just knocking it into gaps. Well, these are the wickets that fell. Kusal Pereira to a low pull toss. He was disappointed. And then he was done looking to go over the top. Beaten by a quicker delivery that spun. Those are the two wickets. Avishka Fernando and Kusal Pereira. At the moment, Dick Pell on 10 and Kusal Mendes on 54. Spread outfield. The one on the leg side saving one. Demon out of, out of the leg side boundary. Short, fine leg. Long off out. Deep extra cover out. Picks the fielder, in fact, he beats the fielder. He has single. The New Zealand spinners have been brilliant. That hey, has been good. He's going at less than six runs and over. So he was good as well. Uh, there's a reason why so many top spots in ICC T20 rankings have been filled and occupied by spinners. Change of pace works. Four runs so far of the first four balls, so turning out to be an excellent bowling spell from Santner. Played late, very delicate again. A single New Zealand, New Zealand wouldn't mind this, they wouldn't mind these singles. In fact, they'll be mightily pleased that they're doing a good job. It's the boundaries that they'll be concerned about. Not only we've seen variations from Santner, but how good is his temperament been? As a spinner, you're always threatened by those big shots, not him. This should be taken. Oh, dropped it! That's Sodi. He'll regret it. It was going away from him. Stuck out his left hand, just couldn't hold on. Ish. 95 for two. Well, he was in a, in a decent position to catch this. He had done all the hard work, sided the ball, and that just didn't really judge it to perfection. Ball was going to be a 50-50 effort from his Sodi. It's not the brightest in the field for New Zealand. He's coating the headlights. There's a reason for that drop. But uh, it could turn out to be a costly miss. New Zealand generally have been so good. Electric in the field. Another look, uh, as you said, they may regret it very much. Kusal Mendes in good form. Just looking to paddle it around. Paddle sweep. And he was almost there. Mendes goes again. On his knees, it's a boundary. It's a good start to the over. Sri Lanka needs that kind of start. They need a boundary to push the ball on the defence. Change of pace picked off. And it's been electric stuff so far from him into the 60s now. On one knee and finding the gap. That was the secret to success of this shot. Had to miss the man in the ring. 
And then the deep fielder was beaten in the process as well. That's the 100. Sri Lankan 100 up in the 14th over. Going at seven and a half runs and over. At the current rate, they'll get to 150. But as you said, Ravis, they need to be looking at around 10 runs and over from here. 165, 170 should be what they're looking at. Got four balls in this over, and then they got six overs left after this. Especially if you've got a half centurion out there. He's got to continue with this effort somehow. Bendis. A lot of things to like about this knock from uh, Bendis. His ability to play conventional shots mixed with some great improvisation. Picked up the length early, he's looked stylish as well. Targeted the leg side fence regularly. That was a six. This was a pickup shot, and he's just gone on to play some effortless drives, and in between has thrown in this leg side flick. Looking to change it up. He brought home, and he's been quite successful at the moment. Taking a lot of pace off the ball. But Kusal Mendes has had this liking to the leg side. He's played some lovely sweep shots, particularly off the faster bowlers. And look to look to just flick it over the top. Well on strike. Oh, gets an inside edge, another single. Sri Lanka has Dasun Sharnaka in the dressing room. Now he's a big six hitter. Sri Lanka would want him to come in at some stage, maybe the last five overs. With a bit of sound platform. He's in next, he's in pads. Five overs to go. I think he'd be perfect to come in. He's good against spin. It's the long ball as well. So much of pace off the ball. Eight runs off that over. It's 103 for two. score 70 Paul Mendes his second best score at the moment 62 not out he's batted wonderfully well 44 balls now with six overs remaining he's just gonna need some help 10 and over 163 at this rate 147 Santos bowled out one for 22 he was brilliant Bodhi's back for his second spell. Still to find the boundary, the Quella. The good thing is, just getting off strike. Getting Mendis on strike, who's able to find the boundary. So Sri Lanka, from here on, 10, 12, as Ramis did mention. 15 or 16 run over just to get that momentum back. Hammer in the gap. Oh, Martin Guttel. Correction, it's Ross Taylor. Go right through. Dave's two runs. Just for brief periods, they've been clumsy, but on the whole, New Zealand, as usual, extremely good in the field. Right, that's 
get out of this over again. Love you, that was the First up here is, come on, lads. 20, 21 off three overs, he'd be pretty happy. That big over just not coming. Maybe that's a sign that it's not as easy as we thought. Russell as well. Gets it straight. The ground on with a chase. Can't get there. Cannot get there. Took it on the full. Nicely done by Nino Sindikwella. Surprised he surely surprised everyone because usually he's the type of player who looks to use the pace. Pick the wrong one. But when you can take it on the full, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I must say, that's not great awareness, though, either, I don't think, from the New Zealand field. Colin de Gronen was probably about 10 right, metres off way. the Maybe boundary when that ball was hit. At this stage, late in the over, he's there again. Late in the over, I think you need to be on that boundary. If they get two, that's fine, but fours and sixes you're trying to prevent. Now that we're in the 15th over, it's a fair call, but earlier on with the Sri Lankans kind of happy to knock it around, it made sense creeping in to save those twos. Oh, it's lovely! He's across the line, he'll pick up one. Better over. 11 runs coming from it. Five to go, 114 for two. Fourteen for two. One big over early on. The last one was the second best over of the innings with eleven coming from it, Russell. Grondon. Continue. Oh, uh, real timing there. Oh, there is, yes. Good enough to pick up fifty partnership. Off thirty-seven balls. He didn't time it, but the New Zealand field helped. Mid on was more like a mid wicket. Slower balls. Bendis expected to drag it towards mid wicket. But he realized there was a gap down the ground and went straight down. The equal high score to Kusal Mendis. Oh, it's gone past it. In some style. That is a long way up onto the bank. Picked the slower ball, dispatched it. That's the second one for Mendes. That was sweetly hit. Just the big over with five to go. They got that foundation right. We spoke about being there with two wickets down. Now they need to finish strong. Can still get up to 170, 180. Plays again, a push for two at least. That two does well. 12 off three. He's been wonderful today, Kusal Mendes. Salty has two, Seth Rans has two, good line two. Obviously, he will go to Saudi for one more. It's pace on the ball. That's working in the batsman's favour. Can't get it past cover. Skipper himself there, patrolling. <laughs> Loves the league side, Russell. Oh, yes. That mid wicket area has also been left open, so he's gone across and worked it into those areas to get off strike. Misses out again. On the leg side, just needed to get it a meter either way of Ishodi. 
come back reasonably well here to Grandon. Four and a six off the first two. He can get out of the over with 14, 15 with a one or a two here. I can be good for the Sri Lankans. Or Sri Lanka could pick up 19. Well, where does he look to go? Probably be paced off, you'd think, the way de Grandon's been going. It was paced off, and he gets it fine enough. Great innovation from Nirushan Dekwela. Finishes a very good over for Sri Lanka. 17 from it. 151 for two, four to go. was going to be a slower ball when you look at the field when you look at what the ground home does you give the quell the pace he'll work you into gaps that was his first boundary second one actually pumped one down the ground so that was a useful one four overs to go 24 balls Best third wicket partnership in T20 internationals for Sri Lanka against New Zealand. At uh, 63 now from 42. Well with 23. Kusal Mendes. Four overs to go. There's 100 on the cards if he wants one. 21 shy of it. And I think Sally will go back to pace now. Self and uh, Kugelein and Rance. Now the options they've got six overs left between them if they want to just try one each from Rance and Kugelein and two from Saudi that is an option if Saudi goes maybe he might go two with Rance and, and one with Kugelein he's got five in the circle should be out should be out and will be out he's so good Martin Guptill he is such a brilliant fielder had to move quite a bit go back and catches it. Slower delivery. Mendes threw it just a little early and ended up dragging it towards mid wicket. He was looking to hit the top of mid on. Now, Simon, I mentioned five in the circle. Didn't need five in the circle. Was it a mistake? But yet, it works for Saudi. But he's batted brilliantly well for Sal Mendes. 79 or 53, Sri Lanka 131 for three. Dustin Chanaka is the new batsman. 28 matches, just 150. Strike rate of 113. And he's not on strike. Little Shantakwella on strike. And uh, Tim South, he's got it right this ball, Russell. Just four inside the circle. That man perfectly placed. Oh, don't tell me it was a plan when he had five. But Mendes tried to hit the top of mid on. Nicely executed, slow delivery, no change in the arm speed. But he had taken the pace off. Martin Gupta, he rarely drops any. Yeah, I think it was a knuckleball from Tim Sally, another one he's developed. Brilliant innings, he gets a pat on the back from the skipper. Job to do to finish it off now, though. Oh, that one. Chanaka. Mid off, mid on in the circle would mean he's not going to get length. Going to be bowling short, try to get him to hit square of the wicket. Whatever slower balls that he does bowl will be bowled into the pitch. 
same ploy for Niroshan Dikwella as well. Deep mid wicket, deep square leg, fine leg, deep third man, and the sweeper on the offside. That's good bowling. He's such a smart operator, Tim South. He's been around for a long time. What a good over this is. A little bit of Chardé going on in the background. Russell, as I said, smooth operator. I think that was from East Raja. You don't know who Chardé was. She sung smooth operator. Well, at the right time, did they get Sri Lanka smooth operator to Sal Mendes? Can't find the gap. Great plans. They pulled it back. There was a 17 run over the previous one. Five balls, four runs. Got his plans right. Execution perfect. A Kiwi captain. Good outing so far, isn't he? Two for 13 and uh, one ball remaining in his third over. Looking to keep that perfect record. His T20 skipper intact. Another slow one. Little under edge, but a terrific over. Five runs and a wicket from the 17th. Three to go, 136 for three. into the last part of this first innings 136 for the loss of three sri lanka need to finish on a high maybe 12 and over to get them to 172. new zealand's ground fielding has been electric to say the least they've been on the button they've missed a chance here or two but uh, nothing to worry about as far as the ground fielding is, is concerned they've been outstanding now what about rance pulling the 18th over kyle He's back into the attack, Seth Rance. Yeah, uh, geez, he took some stick his second over. He'll be looking to come back strong here and some tough overs to bowl. Headbands on, it's hot, it's sweaty. Oh, he likes those scoops. He comes from a country where they invented dill scoop. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly aware of that one, the Aramis. <laughs> but uh, look at this. Trying to go over the keeper's head. He actually got full thickness of the batting edge. Could have learned that. Could have gone anywhere. See a change in field now. Madon now comes into the ring. Third man, you'll see down here, he's very, very fine. It's the right of the Yamaha sign. That's good bowling. That ball dipping in, looking for that Yorker length. That's how to bowl in the last service. It's really well bowled. Uh, executed it really well. They're tough overs to bowl. Really, you need to be on the money. And he is not to bowl any loose deliveries, but just try and keep it as tight as you possibly can. He has 62 matches in his career, 80 wickets, economy of 7.64. Ten times he's got three wickets in and means. Colin Grano gets to the ball, no problem whatsoever. Flat return back to the keeper. Captaincy thing, as far as Saudi is concerned, is, is, is pretty decent because he's mostly talking to his bowler it's sign language like the doubles tennis match where they're asking the partner to go at a certain angle when they uh, service in that service motion similarly in t20 cricket captaincy is, is a lot about that little signals and fielders have got to look at the captain at the bowler all the time 
Yeah, I believe he's marshaled the troops pretty well. And just a single to the man himself. And also key for him here is he's got a, quite a few young players on the park at the moment, which he probably hasn't kept them before and who haven't been captained by Saudi in, in the very early stages of the international career. There's one of them there, Tim Seifert. Kugelein, Scotty Kugelein is very new. Rance is very new. And so it takes a while for all players to get into the rhythm of the captain. It was in the slot, but there was a field set for this big heave. So all has worked well so far in this over. Just six runs so far. He's pulled it back nicely. Average first inning score here at Palakali. And if you bat first, is 176. So Zealand have done reasonably well on that front if they can finish these last 13 balls strong. That is a slow look at the normal. Certainly hasn't kissed through like it normally can here at Palakali. But I'll tell you now, that crowd there, they have been entertained. Excellent delivery. Fantastic Yorker. They're pushing back for two, but really was some special over from Rance. Just eight runs from it. 144 for the loss of three. Saudi has been brilliant to say the least relentless two for 14 in his three overs a lot of things to learn from his style of bowling there's this off cutter the leg cutter the variations the temperament the fields that the angles that he covers so well slow ball there as well and he's also trying to keep it outside the batsman's arc you'll see here runs his fingers knuckleball behind the, the ball and see how it's quite wide inside the wide line and it's really hard for the batsman to be able to reach it and mid on and mid off are up inside the circle it's a big shot into the gap well, that's well controlled good feeling Not New Zealand will be put under a lot of pressure but if you've got Martin Guttel there patrolling the lakeside field and normally you'll see a lot of slots being hit in that area, in that direction, you'd be safe. He's always in the tough positions at this time of the game. Martin Gapto tends to run long on to long on. And another change in field set, mid on, he drops back out, Colin to Grunholm to the boundary. Third man, he comes into the ring. Yeah, once again, beautifully bowled under pressure. These are difficult lengths, lines to deliver. Tim Saudi has done it so many times over the years that it, it's much easier for him. The knuckle ball on the left, the slow ball on the right. Kyle, I mean, that is some expertise for you. Yeah, look, a bit hard to pick up as well for the batsmen because they're in a mindset of wanting to go. And that knuckle ball, that's a new variation for him in the last wee while. And he's executed it excellently. And the one on the right, that's your traditional off cutter. The speed of the arm remains the same when he's bowling the knuckle ball. Another slow ball is giving nothing to the batsman uh, with regard to pace. Yes, yeah, speed of the arm's key, Remy, as you're being on there. But what's really good there is the line of the ball. You see the slow ball and see how it's wide to the batsman. Now, if that ball's on the line of the batsman, he'll be able to catch up to it and hit it to the leg side. But since it's wide, the batsman is reaching for it. It's hard to get power onto the ball. a smash it's going to be out no on the bounce to the deep fielder the ball is probably missing the backdrop i think these lights have not really worked well for the outfielders 150 comes up for sri lanka i think martin guptal was spooked here on the boundary i think he lost the ball in the lights it's a big flip at him 
doesn't know where it is. He's got no idea at all. Would have been a magnificent catch if he's able to get it. There's not much you can do about that. Irritatingly brilliant. 151 for three. needed skyscrapers the deep end of this inning Sri Lanka but it's been Tim Saudi what a bowling spell four overs eight dots two for 20 didn't get hit for a four in a spell fantastic figures another slow ball arc that ball curling back into the stumps Good running, the throw on the bounce, not a strong return. Really good running between the wickets. Two was the early call from Shananka. And they got through really quickly. You can see slow ball again, New Zealand bowlers, but a lot of slow balls tonight. I think that's because the nature of this wicket is really slow. And it's really good running between the wickets by Shalanka. The Gwella and Shananka, a nice little partnership. Big shot, that connects well, goes for six, more like it. Super shot, how important was that two now? He got himself back on strike, Shanaka, and he has absolutely smacked this one straight over Middles head. Look at this, going for the Yorker arts, and he got down, met it on the full, and he timed it magnificently out of the middle of that bat. A little bit of swagger as well with his back foot. I think that was an attempt of a knuckle ball. Full toss, didn't have anything on it, and so smash for six. Four more balls left in this innings. What can they do? 12 and over, 167. Field changes. Fine leg, third man, fourth in the circle now. Long off, long on, into position for a miscue. Oh, beats him with a Yorker link. Direct hit, it is gone. Magnificent play from New Zealand. Great work by Tim Seifert, the wicket keeper. Great ball from Rance. Yorker ball really cracked the batsman up. Shanaka after that huge six. And what Tim Seifert had here is he had time. Watch this. Great Yorker by Rance. Cross seamer. It's missing leg stump. And he had time to set himself. Tim Seifert hits middle stump. Brings about the dismissal. He departs. Shanaka, he goes for. 17, Chilenka 159 for four. Udana is the new man in, 159 for the loss of four. 84 not out his best. Full toss, hit, first ball, and six! Just makes it over the man at long on. What a smash! First ball for Udana. Hits it out of the park. At one stage is going to go down at long on's throat. Jeez, he sees the ball well. Look at this, first ball. Again, attempted Yorker by Rance and oh, the middle of the bat. You can see that quite clearly. Bang! 
Down to Long on. Two more balls left. Goes big again. It's another mighty hit. Two balls, two sixes. Bit of glove love. It's bigger. It's bigger than the last. Go for the Yorker on the start. And look at that crowd go absolutely off the Richter scale. Again, go for the straight. Will slow ball. And that middle of the bat. Well, that's a good one. That's two in a row. This is bigger. 87 meters. Wow, the crowd are absolutely loving it. Massive increase in decibels. Crowds are on their toes. Last ball of the innings. It's been a fantastic over for the Sri Lankans. 20 runs from it so far. Two balls, two sixes for Udana. Strike rate of 600. Another full toss is miscued. Chance for long off. Doesn't come in, doesn't attack the ball. And good running between the wicket. The keeper slips. It's all happening out there. Three runs to Sri Lanka. <laughs> Keeper slipped and sighted it. Came rushing in to click the ball. He slipped over with the spikes. And Sri Lanka end up 1 2 and 4. Look at this. Tim Southey flies it into the keeper's end. And look at this. He goes over Tim Seifert. It's a calamity. And Sodi cleans it up. What an innings. 15 runs off three balls from Udana. Yeah, the finish that Sri Lankans needed, and it's been provided by Odana. First two balls, two sixes, massive over, 23 run, and so Rance ends up with four overs.